we thought we'd bring in a couple of other people. People who could have very easily been caught up in the comparison game, but were able to avoid a self-created hell by means of their faith. One person many of you may know from the movie Bella is Eduardo Verastegui. Verastegui was formerly one of Latin America's top models, singers, and actors, and has committed his many talents to the service of God and the church. Let's hear what he has to say about the role of faith in his own life. Uh, I was uh, raised Catholic by my parents and my family. I have three younger sisters that I love. They're like my three angels, Alejandra, Alicia, and Daniela. My father, Jose, and my mother, Alicia. But even though I was raised Catholic, um, my faith was not the center of my life. Not because I didn't want to, but because I didn't know my faith very well. And how can you love what you don't know? I grew up uh, pretty much uh, with more like a, a cultural faith, you know. Uh, I'm from Mexico, so therefore um, I'm Catholic, but it was more like a cultural. It was not yet uh, a living faith. I started uh, working as a model and somehow that helped me to make a living. Then I started singing in a boy band for, for almost three and a half years and we became very popular. I started traveling all over Latin America to promote my music and concerts and everything. We went to Milan, to Milan, Italy to record our, our first solo album and then we ended up in Cairo, Egypt uh, doing our music video. So it was very surreal for me because it was really fast from a little town, next thing you know, traveling all around more than 15 countries. And so I, I, I was lost. I was only 19 years old and next thing you know, fame came really fast uh, to me. And, uh, and a lot of success uh, at a very young age and, and I was not mature enough. So I thought I was the last Coke in the desert, you know? So a lot of vanity and pride and, and many things that sooner or later uh, kill you uh, internally. I decided to stop and because I wanted to pursue acting as well. So I started doing a lot of acting in Mexico. Then I received a call from the office of Jennifer Lopez um, and they were asking me if I knew how to dance flamenco because she wanted to invite me to, to be her gypsy hero flamenco dancer in her video. And I said, yes, I know how to dance flamenco. So next thing you know, I was here in Los Angeles and I met her, we did the video. So after finishing the music video and after finishing the movie Chasing Papi, I was very confused because after working very hard for 10 years, trying to achieve all the things that society tells you that after, you know, after achieving success and money and fame, etc., you are going to be very happy. And I was very confused because in one hand, I thought I had everything, but in the other hand, I, I had nothing. I was very empty and, and something was missing in my life, but I didn't know what it was. I was going to, you know, to the gym to work out every day. I was a healthy person, you know, always trying to eat healthy, uh, wonderful family. So I was like, if I'm doing everything right, I'm working really hard. Why am I empty? Why I'm not happy? What's wrong? So I was very trying to trying to figure that out because because I wanted to be happy. I wanted to I wanted to do the right thing, and 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 I thought I was doing the right thing. And, and that's when I met this wonderful lady, my English teacher, who not only taught me English, but uh, in a very subtle way, she ended up changing my life. Uh, she started using the Socratic method, which means um, she, she was teaching me English, but at the same time, she was asking me a lot of questions. You know, very simple, but very meaningful and important and profound questions. Like, for example, you know, what is the purpose of life? How are you using your talents? Who has got in your life and um, are you part of the problem or part of the solution? Do you realize that since the 40s until today, you know, uh, Latinos, uh, your community have been stereotyped in a very negative way in media and very few times you see Latinos having an opportunity to be a hero, but not like Superman or Spider-Man, but the everyday hero, a man who come to this country not to steal, but to work really hard. So Eduardo, what are you doing in, in, in the media? Are you portraying Latinos in a positive way? in a positive light or, or not. So when I look back and I see all the things that I was doing, I realized that I was, you know, in my opinion, I was poisoning um, our society by my interviews, by 
many of the things that I was doing, I, I forgot that whatever project you are involved, whether you like it or not, you affect how people think, how how they live, and, and, and media influence how people think, how they live, how they, how they behave. And I didn't know all these things, so I was not assuming the responsibility, the responsibility that I, that I needed to assume.